compared to the old stuff like it's still just as complicated it, it's pro it's probably more complicated honestly but it's you can latch like there's so much like simpler ideas and like hooks you can get onto and like simpler ideas that are executed like very complexly with a lot of things going on and like that's I think <coughs> like, the definition of the new sound like it's still every bit as weird and like I mean, I don't even know. If we talk about like we're not even like a math rock band anymore, even though we kind of are sometimes. It's but. Well, I remember the first like the first yeah. direct comparison I had to anything that we were doing at the time. It was sort of like this thing of like, we were drifting away from wanting to do kind of weird mathy things because it's like when you when you play that kind of music, like the risk reward is like yeah. ludicrously stunted. And we had just really started kind of delving into this record by this band called Out of Easy Shank. And their whole their whole shtick is basically like it's it it would be like if math rock was in four four and they played it for just like so football funny. kids like like it's 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 that kind of thing of like everything sounds like that like -na 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 -na, uh, that thing but like <laughs> somehow like weirder and crazier and like kind of all at once we sort of arrived at this unified idea that like we needed to send like very direct messages with what we were writing like the riffs needed to be very clearly defined and the difference between like it's the kind of thing where it's like I don't know it's a thing that we would have been able to do without Pat because for starters when we played the old stuff with Pat you immediately were like wow like there is this there's a clarity of like the motion that's happening like everything became a concussive, propulsive thing. And then when we started writing to his strengths and we started attacking him with this idea, it became <clears throat> like a totally different thing altogether because all of a sudden, like, it had always been, like, I would play to Chris's part and there would be, like, a very specific sort of, like, rhythmic interplay where, like, I kind of just would ape what he was doing verbatim. And then all of a sudden when Pat stepped in, it became this thing of, like, I feel like I grew another arm. You know, like we're we're able to do much more complex interplay just because of the precision of the two people creating like melodies. So it it, it it was it was a serious game changer when like we first started to go into writing and Pat sort of demonstrated like this is what I do and like also it was scary as you know like because you know we're the first song that we wrote is the basically the noisiest, craziest one off the record. Yeah. And we're sitting there like, what in God's name did we just write? What yeah. what is this? Like we had already been sort of weirded out by the first two things on the record and then yeah. all of a sudden and I think like yeah. people like seem to respond to it well. Like when we wrote that like first hook <coughs> for Murder Island, like it was just like okay. Yeah. Well it's the first well, yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be the new sound basically. Yeah. Cool my, turnaround. My I mom the other day I was like, oh, what's that song that goes like, do, 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 and I'm like, I, I know what it is, Mom, but I don't want to talk about it with you. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? <laughs> the Echoplex uh, and the looping stuff, I, I mean, sometimes it's a little gimmicky. Like, I have tricks that I use a lot, like, they're, they're go-to things. <laughs> <laughs> they're go-to things that I do on the Echoplex, um, and, like, features that I use in the way I use it. But the thing that's really important for me about looping and the thing that I admire about a lot of bands that I enjoy who do that, that I follow and I look up to and I look at basically at, at like what they're doing and I'm like, that's a great idea. Like how can I use that? Or how, how can I learn from that and do something on my own? Is that looping is never an end in itself. Like it's never something like, it should never be a magic <clears throat> trick. It should never be one of those things of like you're spinning a plate and you stand back and you're like, hey. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, yeah, it's like it's always it's a, a lot tool. of work. 
It's always it's always a tool to construct something. Yeah. The reason why looping is in this band and it's part of it is because I can't find 19 other people to play in this band. <laughs> it makes and I don't want to so deal big, with yeah. 19 other people. <clears throat> Does that make the recording process easier or harder? <clears throat> Man, <laughs> it's, it's harder. And like that's the thing. Like, yeah, we're doing it like live, but like. So you, we don't use the Echoplex, or Chris doesn't use the Echoplex when we do it on record. So like, and certain things like in these pedal boards and like all the chains, like sometimes some brand of magic happens where you get a weird sound that you would never get on a computer. Ain't having mistakes. Yeah, what? yeah. and it, yeah, it's exactly yeah. it's like the mistakes and the imperfections that like we base the sounds off. Like a lot of these whammies have a weird modulation and like things like that, and like how do you replicate that on a computer and like it's cool to hear it like perfect like when I first started hearing all the guitar <coughs> music it's cool to hear it like concise and perfect but there is something that's different about it I guess because like the thing I think people I'd might scream. not like know or understand yeah. about like how we do this live is like if you listen to the record then then you listen to us like maybe you won't notice but like if we're having a good night <coughs> at least <laughs> but a lot of the times, the songs don't come off the same. Like, there's a lot of times where certain parts are longer, certain parts are shorter. I mean, it's just the nature of all this, like, looping, and it's just, you know, it's par for the course, so. Which is interesting when you're playing it live, never playing the same song almost twice, but. Yeah, it, it gives <coughs> it, it gives it. A sense of danger, um, almost. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, there's a definite, uh, like, you're worried, like at certain parts, like you know this part is coming up, and if like Chris doesn't nail it, or like if Mike and I don't nail this change, or like if we, like if we're playing in a weird room, and like Mike and I can't see each other, Chris and I can't see each other, like we could destroy a whole song. Well, playing in this band is basically putting out fires. Yeah, all night. it's it's, it's like something work. happens, and then we all go, like if you ever see a face that looks like this, yeah. that means something has gone horribly wrong. No, we're just straight facing yeah. it. Yeah, we're just like, cool. How do we fix? Uh, and then we just move on to the next part. It's like the weirdness about the way that the songs are all constructed is it's not even so much like a like a concrete structure as it is like you're sort of just like putting a tower up mm -hmm. and once you get to the exact right point, you knock it down and you start the next tower. But the issue is that like you want to get there within a certain time frame, but sometimes you can't. And then you have to adjust for how you figure that out within the frame of how you're playing. And that took a very long time to establish how to communicate that stuff. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting band dynamic. I mean, playing another band, like there's, yeah, it's... I found it the perfect analogy. It's tough. What's this, that? This band is competitive cup stacking. <laughs> yes! Ah! It really, it's, and it's... <laughs> And like the thing about it is like Sony was telling us like it's like yeah we're like like <laughs> the Echoplex and like the looping like that's our gimmick like at the end of the day that, that's our gimmick but like after a couple of years and you guys like hashing it out like it's gotten to the point where like after it's begun you might not necessarily like realize it's happening but it's it's a it's a hard dynamic to to play to all the time. And Chris was telling me that he's tired of the album. <laughs> you know what? Chris is tired of the album because for the past like, month and a Chris is half, just tired. Chris is just tired, first of all. Chris has been up until 7 in the morning for the past God knows how many nights. So, yeah. like, he would come into practice and he'd be like, oh, I'm so tired. And we're like, why? And he would just be like, I've been up till 7 mixing the record. And we're like, why? Why? And he's like, the hi hat sound funky. And then he just melts into the floor. Yeah. <laughs> That'll happen. That'll happen. It was honestly, it's it's the reason that I think the record sounds as polished yeah. as it does, though, is because one of us was crazy enough to do that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it, was, it was that balance um, with the final record that you know I'm very pleased with, and I think it sounds amazing. It's the balance of the intensity and the sheer sheer ferociousness that we show live. That's like nearly unhinged. It feels like things can fall apart at any moment. Because like, it can. Yeah. <laughs> and that that ferociousness with the tightness um, and the polished treatment that the recording deserves. And so it was one of those things of like, uh, the, re the record, um, it, was, it was difficult to make. Glad I made it. I think it's really great. Uh, you know, 
I don't I don't know how to like encapsulate or like conclude that statement other than the fact that it was it was very difficult and there were some parts that were really fun and there were some parts that were really tedious. But I think the end all be all of it is we got it. <laughs> like, <laughs> not like we got it, like hey kid, you're going straight to the top. Like like we we captured We did what we like, wanted to do. We captured like, Mewtwo, yeah. alright? We got we got it, no master ball needed. Yeah. We literally just went up, shook hands, said, you're coming with us. <laughs> That'll be Goose, Goose just jumped out of his musical cockpit. He was just like, hey, back of it. You can live with me anytime. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> that was the feeling. Um, I, I did want to ask, how did you guys get a, a hold of uh, South by Southwest? We actually thought we weren't going for yeah, quite a while. We, we, didn't, yeah. we didn't actually think we were going, and then it came through. Like we did all the work, and then it got to the point where we were just like, "Well, South by Southwest isn't happening," and we kind of already had yeah. some tour dates. It was, works. it was really funny actually. Like I was, I was sitting in here, and we literally the night before we had gone through like this just horrible two o'clock in the morning. Like, what are we doing? And like, we had this whole list of stuff that we were gonna do, and we had it planned out so we'd only hang out in Austin for maybe two or three days because the trick to South by is that there's all this. Uh, unofficial stuff that happens. It's like it's the lion's share of what you do when you're there. So it's like, um, you know, basically we were under the impression that like, cool, like we're not going to be in on the festival, but if we're there, we know people who are. And I have a couple friends out in Austin and I was trying to put some stuff together. And that was sort of like the guys that we were okay with yeah, at the time. Just going and like, like we were sort of, to yeah. Build. Like there was no there was no pressure to that, and so we were sitting there like, okay, like our, you know, one of our, it's like our only our second kind of big kid jaunt into the world. So like, I'm standing in here, and Chris is just at his guitar, and I get like the confirmation text. It's like congratulations. Yeah. And I just laugh, and he's like, what? And I told him. And his face was just this mixture of like mixture. happy, and then just all of the muscles in his body tensing, like or tensing up to like the point where I don't think he could move. It was just sort of this one, just like. Yeah. And after all a few days, we adjusted. Yeah. yeah. 